Turn-based games come in all shapes and sizes, and depending on the type of game, developers might want to do things a little bit differently. From fire emblems, large and sprawling battles, to Final Fantasies, intimate and quick encounters. Today, we're going to take a deep dive and figure out what makes the best turn-based system for your games. Let's start with maybe the most accessible type of turn order, and perhaps the most relevant since the release of Baldur's Gate 3, and that's the consistent order. By consistent, I mean games where the turn order has been set and it remains that way until the end of battle, unless one of your characters gets blown up by a barrel or something. If that sounds simple, it isn't. The order can be set in many different ways. Perhaps it's set purely using your character stats, like your speed stat in Darkest Dungeon. Alternatively, it could be inspired by D&D's wildly used initiative system, where each character in a battle has a slightly modified role based on their initiative stat. Or perhaps the tone order is based purely on the color of your pieces. And speaking of colored pieces, we can't really talk about tone-based games without talking about one of the OGs of all games, chess. Chess is what you'd call a perfect information game, or pie games for short. My short definition for this is that all players have all and equal information from the beginning of the match. Obviously this doesn't mean it's simplistic, even though both players have the same starting pieces, the board can end up in billions of ways. And even though both players have the same information and the same pieces, white has a 2-6% higher win rate than black. Why? They go first. All the time. This just further emphasises the importance of turn orders and how they can influence any game. And for me, that forms the central pillars of what makes consistent tone orders so appealing, initiative and information. Having a reliable understanding of what will happen and who will move lets players develop inventive multi-tone strategies that feel incredibly satisfying and make you feel like a big brain genius. I am too smart. I am too smart. I am too smart. I am too smart. And the earlier you move in the turn order, the better chances of taking the initiative and successfully executing your plans. Inversely, if you have poor initiative and move much later than your opponent, you might spend the entire battle trying to escape the jaws of defeat and try to flip the tables on your opponent's strategy. I think what makes this type of turn system unique is its ability to make you feel like a superior mega mind in one battle as you see all your traps and strategies execute flawlessly while also making you feel like if you're fighting for your life in another, all while playing the exact same game. Next, let's talk about team turn orders. Games where the whole team moves together. Think Fire Emblem, XCOM, or the Disgaea series. The levels in these games tend to be massive. One battle could take anywhere from 20 minutes to over an hour and it wouldn't be uncommon for, to have these massive groups of characters you have to control, unlike something like Baldur's Gate where you only have a four person max. And in games where you want the player to feel like they're controlling a whole army or a cohesive squad, it's essential for them all to move together. But being able to move all of your units together in one tone, I think is also this genre's greatest weakness. Having these large teams creates a reliance on formations that can result in very long tones. This could worsen if the battle reaches a dull point where there isn't much action happening, typically at the beginning or the end of battles. And in these large encounters, it isn't uncommon to fight on multiple fronts. Perhaps there are branching paths or various objectives or multiple victory conditions, and you need to split up your army in order to successfully execute. Well, what would happen if one half of your army completes its objective first? They're still movable, do you spend the time slowly moving them across the battlefield to provide backup to your other half? That just prolongs the level even more because you're spending time doing that movement. Or you could just ignore them and have faith that the current side will win and do their job successfully. But another problem is ignoring characters and not using their movement tends to always come with some kind of disclaimer, right? You play one of these games, you say, skip this guy's turn, it pops up this character has actions available or something like that and it's just extra clicks that just takes time that you don't want to spend on but it's not all bad after all real life army formations exist for a reason you want your characters to be able to act as one unit and cover each other's backs for example if you're in a pivotal moment of a level 
let's say a character has just moved into reaching distance of the final goal of the mission and you're about to win, right? Well, if you had an eight plus characters to control, like in Fire Emblem, but imagine you had like a standard tone or like, like in Divinity or something like that, you would need to execute or skip everyone else's tone before it got back to that character that could finally win the level. So in that scenario, it does save time and it's, and it's more accessible for these large teams. And I mentioned it already, but also ensuring a stable formation with a standard order would be nearly impossible. Imagine whatever game, if you had a tank and a ranged character, you would almost always want your tank to be in front, right? This is only possible with a team order because both your characters can move at the same time and they can maintain the correct distance. But if it was a standard turn order, your tank would go move forward, your ranger would go, and then they would have to move forward. But in that kind of short gap, the ranger would be in front of your tank, right? Because you're waiting because you have to wait for your tank's turn to happen again. Either that or you don't use all of your ranger's movements and it just slows down the progress even more, right? Unless a tank has abnormally high movement and they can just always stay really far ahead. Or an archer has really high attack range where they can always basically attack and hit somebody. And then finally, let's talk about dynamic turn orders. Final Fantasy refers to this as CTB or conditional turn based battle systems. Party members and enemies in these games will have the turn order decided based on the specific stats. However, the action taken by each character will determine how soon they will take their next action. For example, in Final Fantasy X, using an item will result in another turn much sooner than using your overdrive ability. This means that battles are more reactive and it's challenging to know what will happen in the future. This just adds an extra layer to the puzzle. Instead of causing the most damage this turn, I want to generate the most damage while also maximizing the number of turns I get, which is just incredibly satisfying once you pull it off. Since executing large and complicated strategies with these reactive battles can be quite difficult, these games tend to have much smaller and quicker fights than the other categories we've discussed. A lot of them would even use random encounters or random mob battles to keep the action constantly going. And I think from a development perspective, this is probably the most difficult one to pull off. Not only technically, but also in terms of the user interface. A lot can go on in one rotation of taunts. And how that information is communicated to the player can be very challenging. Many games utilize timelines for this. Main position somewhere on the screen representing how long it'll take for each character to get to the next turn. And that line will also display the impacts your actions will have on, on that graph. It's a really elegant and efficient communication tool for this. I recently played through the first Fuga game, which uses one sort's methods really effectively. Actions have different speeds. You can stun and slow your enemies. And in this game specifically, it has a color coded weakness system. Enemies have assigned colors or groups of colors representing different weapon types. If you hit the enemy with all of those types, you break them, sending them flying back in the turn order. But obviously that's not the only way to show dynamic turn orders. In Chrono Trigger, each character has their own timer constantly ticking at different speeds, while Final Fantasy X and the Trailed series have a much more traditional approach. At a glance, this seems like a fairly standard turn order, but the magic happens when you try to do anything. The UI is entirely reactive, so when you hover over an action, it shows a preview of how it will affect the turn order and that turn order won't solidify until you perform the action. I really love this way of representing turns. There's something about speeding up a character and seeing them move in front of an enemy's turn that just makes my toes tingle. I just love it. So much that I tried to make it myself in my asset pack, Tactics Toolkit. Link in the description. And it, re it revealed some fascinating complexity for me. When I tried to recreate the system, I made everyone reactive, including the enemies, but of course, there's no need to preview an enemy's actions because they execute instantly. So as you play, the enemies are just jumping around in the turn order. That's not what happens in Trails of Cold Steel. In this game, the only time the enemies reactively move in the turn order is when you move them around, either by stunning or slowing them, meaning that all of the enemy's actions are predefined. And in an ordinary turn-based game, that isn't a big deal. Enemies can just have a group of activities that they can have on rotation, and it's simply just queued up what they do each turn. Right? Not a big deal. But what about in a tactics game where movement and positioning need to be taken into place? You could do the same. Assume the enemy will move and attack each turn. 
and you can worry about where they need to move to and who they need to attack when that tone happens. But then what happens if the tone comes up and there is no one in range to attack? Technically, they've done less this tone than you anticipated and could potentially mix up the tone order and ruin a player's future plans. I think the best solution for this would be some kind of clever design decisions. Maybe design your levels so it's impossible not to do something or make sure that your encounters have enough units that no one character can be in the preview order too many times. And I'm just talking about one example of the complexity that these systems can introduce that is going to be unique for every single game. So which type of tone-based game is the best? Well, all of them. The important thing to note is that every tone-based game is unique, all with their own abilities and methods of interacting with the tone order. It all depends on what game you're trying to make. Do you want strategic and carefully planned battles? Go for a consistent tone order. Do you want large scale battles where positioning and team formations are essential? Go for a team order. Or maybe you want lots of fast paced reactive battles, then you go for a dynamic order. Or do whatever you want. Who the fuck am I? None of these are hard set rules. These are just my ideas and thoughts on this deep design concept. But let me know what you think in the comments. Are there any tone types that I didn't mention? Or maybe there's some great games out there that flip some of my ideas that I haven't thought about or known about. Let me know, please. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Uh, I've been gone a while. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's been just been super busy. And I know this video is really different than the ones I normally make. So do please give me some feedback and let me know below if I did a good job. I really like like game design channels. So I thought I'd take a crack at it and see, see how I do. Uh, so yeah, just a bit of feedback would be fantastic if anybody has it. And uh, don't forget to join the Discord down below. We just passed over 100 members, uh, which is really cool. I didn't think it would ever get that big. Um, so I'm really happy about that. And yeah, just join in and uh, take part. And thank you again so much for watching. I mean, it means a lot. Thanks, guys. Bye.